let me just start recording and already say, what is daily life for you now? Dude? How, how, much, how much swearing is allowed? Um, preferably not a lot. So like, so whatever monetization I can get from this. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Preferably not a lot though. I will definitely try not to. But um, what is daily life? It's I have like two classes right now, but they're, they're both asynchronous. So I could just uh, whenever I want to actually watch the lectures and do homework, I can do that. Um, I occasionally find friends because we're all back here because of the pandemic. Like none of us thought it was going to be like that because this is technically the uh, the fifth year for my class of uh, like high school. Uh, a lot of them are graduated. So, you know, they, they were like, okay, we're going to be finding jobs in the U.S. Uh, none of us going to be together. And then we're all back in Taiwan now. It's like, damn. I mean, that's cool. I mean, we get to see each other, but the situation's just pretty bad. But other than that, um, I go find the Tony Smash scene a lot. Uh, that's cool. Hang out with my family because, you know, we just all live together. Right. Uh, yeah. By the way, dude, I haven't seen him. Did Because I know he lives over there. Did Taiwan Man also move back to Taiwan? No, I don't think so. I think he's still in SoCal. Okay, cool. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why he would not <laughs> choose to come back here. <laughs> I will, how, let me ask you, how, how is it over there? Because, like, I don't want to talk about myself a lot because... My, my best friend, she married, basically long social, she married somebody in the Air Force. They moved to Korea. So literally every other, once in, once in a blue moon when we do connect, she's like, oh, it's fine here. Like, they're slowly letting yeah. us go back to Seoul. Like, things are starting to slowly curl up. Um, yeah, things have changed. How, how are things like that for in Taiwan right now? Because I saw that you guys were, at, like, at a, was it an invitational? Was it local? I saw something. I don't know what was going we have, on. We have, um... Like every week we have Smash Fests, and then every month we have monthlies, and they're all just offline. God, but, um, you guys must be so <laughs> lucky right now. Because <laughs> and, and the thing we we've had that since it was, I think April, or something. Like we never stopped having offline Smash Fests. Is the thing. But we didn't. We I think we had like one or two months where we didn't do tournaments. I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. Because <laughs> like, um, I, I haven't checked the numbers, but uh, I remember the month where I came back was uh like March, right? And mm -hmm. the the end of March, uh, town was getting like the most, the our our most amount of um, like infected people but they weren't because of domestic cases like they, they weren't like local people transmitting into other local people it was right, everyone right, right. from america you know canada whatever all that stuff uh coming back and then it was like oh yeah you have it at the airport now go quarantine <laughs> <laughs> this is how much i oh my god yeah no like, way like i'm like uh, i'm trying not like I'm laughing, but deep inside, I'm very, very upset. Uh, you're probably crying, yeah. I'm crying inside, yes. <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure, like, have you seen... Because uh, uh, I posted a clip, it was like a Bowser Jr. clip, and then uh, in it, you could see... You're like, offline. Me and, yeah, it was offline, and uh, both me and my opponent, Lyra, we weren't wearing masks. And probably some people were like, oh, you can't do that. And we were just like, I mean... There's nothing here, basically. I mean, we like if it's like a very official gathering, like political or like just a very big like wedding or something like that. Then yeah, we'll probably wear some masks. Um, masks, masks are still uh, required on public transportation. Right, right, right. Uh, like, uh, metro, bus, whatever. Uh, and it's like recommended if you're going to like a mall or something, but. <laughs> I mean, we just bring it. But <laughs> what, what, okay, let's 
just like I know we're getting into the middle of the show, so I'm literally going to introduce this in a second. But like, yeah, just yeah, just, yeah. just give it to me straight. How many cases have you guys had in these past? Like, well, we've been in quarantine. So here in SoCal, we've been in quarantine since March. I'm lazy. I'm assuming. Let's see, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So we've been in quarantine for about nine months. Coming up on check one. coming coming up. I'm sorry, eight months. I'm so that's that's terrible. I'm holding the wrong fingers. I've been we've been in quarantine eight months. Coming up on nine here in November, right? And ten on December, or that that's yeah, because we started started quarantine in the yeah. middle of late March, whatever. I'm really bad at math right yeah, now, but and obviously the cases have rose up to like two hundred thousand, um, mm-hmm. and like it's. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like this, this is this is a genuine reaction of my like own anger <laughs> because of how hilariously bad it is. I'm so mad that it's funny. It's um. Let me. So I checked just now. Uh, if I remember correctly, when I came back in like late March, we had around 350 cases, uh, with six deaths, and then. Up till now, it's been, like you said, however many months. Uh, right now, it's 530 confirmed <laughs> cases. In and, total? Uh, seven in, deaths. This in total? Yeah, total. Oh, my God. At time of this, at time, <laughs> at, of, at time of this recording, yeah, I... Yeah, at the time of this. Okay, at, which is where we're recording in, in, in October. I think it's. I think this episode should release at the beginning of October or, like, no, early November. Yeah, probably. At the time of this recording, I have now had... This was just I was so I was playing Valorant uh, with a couple of good friends of mine. Time of this yeah. recording, I've had two tests, both negative, thank God. But they just like I'm like I could literally show you guys. I have two messages from two different friends. One of them who went to go vote in person, and he told me he ca- he came out positive. Another friend, and you remember Gerald, right? He's positive. Yeah. Yeah, and then I have another friend. Who lives in NorCal, and she's positive. <laughs> and she's right. yeah, and she's like, this is this is this is hell. <laughs> so I'm negative. So I'm just like, oh my god. Anyways, guys, look, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Welcome to DI Radio. I this is the talk show where I interview some influential people. Um, you guys may not know who he is, but I have the names wrong, so I'll probably fix it in post because in, in the current unpost, I have your tag and you have my tag because I don't know what's wrong with Discord, but that's how just things work. Um, <laughs> this is my good friend, Shine, all the way from Taiwan. Dude, how have you been? I've been good. I know we just good. talked about it, but like... <laughs> yeah. To, to add on, by the way, um, for... Like, basically all the cases ever since April have been imported. So, it's all people coming back. <sighs> Dude, that, that's... that's Because, <laughs> see, okay, look, we'll talk a little bit about this here. Because I have a friend, and, like, my friend, she tells me, she's like, they're super strict laws. Like, if they catch you without a mask outside for any reason, they fine you. Like, she's, that's literally, I think that's how we're... Um, I have to double check her area in Korea specifically because I have to ask her. But she told me they find you if you're not if you're caught walking outside, they will find you. If you get caught like in certain situations without a mask or if you're sick, they will find you and then they will quarantine you and then they'll see mm-hmm. if you're better. So like yeah. she's like it's super strict. Like they're not letting anybody like just to make sure. And like here it's like oh dude, my fr- I I haven't gone for a walk in a minute. But like I'll go out on a walk, I'll see like families, no masks whatsoever, just breathing the open air. I'm just like, come on, man, you're making it worse for me. Yeah. Um, it's, um it's serious stuff, like, man. Uh, yeah, talk talking about the uh, because you brought up quarantine because uh, I've had to, I've had to, go, I mean, go under quarantine like twice because uh, March I came back and then obviously I went back to SoCal in August for right, two right, weeks. Right. Uh, so when I got back from there, I also had to do quarantine. Um, we, uh, they actually at the airport, they had like a, you, you have to give them like a cell phone number, uh, either the one you already have, or you have to just get like a temporary one. Um, and then they will like GPS track your phone number. All right. And so you give them the address you're going to be staying at. For me, it was just my home. Um, 
And then if you move from there, then they will send police over there, like immediately. Uh, they also tell you your phone can't be like you can't run out of battery because if you run out of battery, they can't track you. And uh, something they didn't tell you is um, you also can't have bad signal because <laughs> if you don't have bad because I mean, if you have bad <laughs> signal, they also can't track you. My room, the one I'm in right now had like terrible signal for some reason during the two weeks I came back uh, from SoCal in August. Okay. So the police came over like three times because they can't, they, they couldn't track me. So they, they came over, uh, you know, knocked on the, like took the security guard uh, downstairs, came up to the fucking, oh, whoops. One word, one word yeah. will be fine. If, if we go to like yeah, five words, then. Or, uh, you know, rang the doorbell, all that. And then I, I had to walk out. I was like, oh, uh, I just have bad signal. And they're like, all right, sure. Because <laughs> otherwise, I could find, like, I think it was up to 100,000 New Taiwan dollars, which is around um, I'm 3K bad with... USD, something like that. Oh, 3K. God. 3K. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, 3K. Somewhere around that. If you move, yeah, I think that, that. I'm really bad. I don't know how much Korean won translates to American US dollars, but she's like, it's about a thousand dollar fine, roughly, if you get caught yeah, yeah. in public without a mask. She's like, the yeah. police will grab you, they, they'll write you the checkup, they give you a mask, and then it's thousand dollars. Now, yeah. now, it obviously not so much, but back, back in April, yeah, everyone was wearing masks, all that. Uh, it, Shine, you and I go back. Like, I think I think we go we go we go we go pretty far back. Uh, pretty far. But I know who. <laughs> this is the funny. This is the best part about this episode. Is I'm just getting upset about the U.S. system <laughs> as everybody else is. <laughs> but I know who you are. Okay. And I know a lot of people may or may not know who you are. I I love this about you because when I found this out, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard from anybody. But for those who don't know who you are, Shine, please tell me your elevator pitch. Who are you? Uh, my name's Ken. Uh, my tag's Shine, not Shine. Uh, pretty sure. Very few people say that nowadays, but back then a lot. Um, I'm a player from, or I'm from Taiwan, play Smash. Um, but I'm like half a Taiwanese player, half a SoCal player, because, well, I sort of, my career started in SoCal. So, um, right now I'm a player for Mazer. Um, you know, I was PR in SoCal. I'm the best player here in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, not, not too special, but I guess unique. Yeah. I think that's the, the, my favorite, uh, factoid about that is like, you're the number one player. Like that was the one thing I think I had to learn that from, I'm not from two people. Cause I remember you told me, but I didn't believe you. And then I asked him, and then he was like, "Yes, he is the." Uh, so I remember you told me a little while back, "Oh yeah, I'm the best, the best player in Taiwan." And I thought like, "Okay, well, Ken is totally just like joshing me, man." And I say that because I'm trying not to curse, but he's just totally joshing me, man. And then I go to Taiwan, man. I think the one time I went to like a USC Friday. Remember when we used to have those guys? I oh, will maybe maybe not everybody watched this episode, but like we used to have USC Friday. We used to have a tournament Friday at USC, and then I great. A, yeah, a really great one. That's what, that's that's the one thing I miss the most. I was actually talking to Zenos a little earlier about that, and mm -hmm. I was like, I miss that tournament so much. But um, I asked Taiwan man, who's a USC alumni, and he like basically said, yeah, <laughs> she is the number one player in Taiwan. I mean, we don't have the biggest smash scene, but you know, <laughs> if you were to rank, yeah, yeah that's number one right there. Because <laughs> like I don't I don't I don't like uh, flaunting it, but. Everyone asks in SoCal, so I, I answer. Yeah, I answer truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of want to like start from the beginning here because we've, we've we've talked about current times, man. Because <laughs> times are rough. Um, here, I mean, shoot, I wish I lived in Taiwan right now, man. This is for the first <laughs> for the first flight right now. <laughs> but um, I kind of want to start from the beginning, man. Uh, how did you? Who like I ask everybody this question, right? Who, and I and, and I apologize ahead of time for anybody listening. I have a bit of a strep throat, so I don't have a sore throat. It's basically like it's causing saliva 
to like go in my throat. It's really weird, but um, I'm not sick. I came out negative, but it's just the thing that's happening. So I might be a little bit like I might throw in my words like that. So, um, but how did who? Talk to me from the beginning, man. Who bought you? And this is a question I ask everybody. Who bought you the Game Boy, the GameCube, the Wii, whatever started it all? Like, how how did you first get into playing video games? And then I, you know? So, I, uh, I've always been, like, a very big Nintendo fan. Uh, a very big part of that is because the first game I ever came in contact with was Pokemon. I think it was, like, it was either, I think it was Crystal. Because... Um, I have a lot of older, I have an older sister who's nine years older than me, um, and I have a lot of older, like, cousins, uh, and they used to play Pokemon, you know, uh, play against each other a lot, and I remember the first ever Pokemon I used was my sister's for Alligator against uh, my cousin's Electabuzz, and so ever since then, I got really into, like, Pokemon, and really got into Nintendo, um, and that was when I was still in Taiwan. I moved in. I moved to SoCal actually before I graduated high school. I, I moved to SoCal when I was four. Um, until I was eleven, which I moved back to Taiwan. But during those seven years, uh, I uh, you know, obviously I made friends there, and then we all had the Wii, and then uh, we all bought Brawl. <laughs> uh, so I actually didn't start with Melee. Which most people did, I feel like. Um, I, I I went to like a family friend's place and they had melee. I was like, oh, this is this is cool. You play Pichu, uh, Mewtwo, all that. But I didn't actually like get into it. Uh, but then I brought bought Brawl. Uh, got super into Brawl. Granted, I was a complete casual, complete casual. I was there like, I remember I was a Lucario main. Because well, Lucario's cool, dude. That was me. That was um, me. That was like I was really quick. I, I, was Lu- I love Lucario from Gen Four. So I was like, dude, that's my favorite yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shout out to the furries for ruining this Pokemon for me. I mean, if you guys think they've ruined Gardevoir for people who just like Gardevoir, furries ruined <laughs> Lucario for me. I didn't know Lucario was like the genuine furry spokesman uh, for Pokemon yeah. fans. But thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Not, not gonna judge them, but um. Yeah, the movie is cool, so I made Lucario. Uh, funny thing is actually, uh, you know, I was there spamming Aura Sphere, and then my friend used Lucas, healed off an Aura Sphere. I said, wait, that's broken. Let me main Lucas. So that was actually my first, uh, like, experience with Lucas. And as, you, as you know, he's, like, my semi-main now. Um, Grand Hell is just PK thundering with him all the time. Uh, before I actually found out about competitive, but um, I was playing brawl a lot, um, and then I moved back to Taiwan. Uh, the Switch came out. Uh, Smash Four got announced. I was like, oh, finally six years, uh, I could play. And then that was like after I got it, I finally started searching for like tournament videos. Uh, and I remember the first tournament video I ever saw. Of Smash Four was a uh, VG Boot Camp, Xanadu. Uh, mm-hmm. It was like Junebug versus Neo or something, um, and that was like that was me looking at like a first, like an actual competitive match. And I was like, "Whoa, this is what Smash should look like." Um, at, so least, at least we hope. You know, I, I, huh? <laughs> and like, at least we hope is what it should look like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I played a lot of For Glory. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know, and I'm pretty sure a lot, most of SoCal know, I never rage. I never rage, doesn't matter how badly I lose, uh, all that. But, oh my goodness, you should have seen me on the For Glory. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I, I do want to talk about that, because that's, that's part of your character as a person and as a whole. But I, mm-hmm. what I want to talk about is what prompted you guys to move to SoCal in the first place, which is like, which is what I'm curious about. Um, my, it's very funny. My dad actually just got a green card off of a lottery. <laughs> I yeah, and uh, <laughs> okay. So, oh uh, yeah. So we we were given the chance to either go to, it was either Canada. 
America or I think it was just these two, maybe like one more. Um, and so my dad, and my mom, they you know talked about it, whatever, uh, and then decided on you know SoCal because uh, he also had friends in SoCal already. Uh, so we moved. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's kind of like I don't I have no idea what Taiwan is like, but to know that your dad won a green card, <laughs> some kind yeah. of raffle, it's, it's just kind of wild. It's kind yeah. of wild. <laughs> it's, and then you know after that they just um they took the citizenship test and so i'm also a citizenship i mean citizen now oh but both both in the states and taiwan yeah both yeah nice 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 nice, nice. congrats congrats was that, re- was that recently yeah. no no they uh okay. they took it they took the test before i uh we moved back here gotcha 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 yeah still at least you have that, that dual citizenship definitely oh, it, it, yeah yeah it helps a lot. Oh, most definitely, dude. You're like, <laughs> you're like, what quarantine, man? <laughs> yeah. What is Wi-Fi? I don't even have to play Wi-Fi, you guys. <laughs> oh, oh, America's like getting, you know, run over. Oh, I'll come back here. Oh, I don't, I don't want to do uh, military service. I'll go to America. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me ask you really quick. That's kind of like my favorite thing about you. Can you explain what? What is your thought process when you, I mean, obviously you said you rage in for glory, but like, what is your thought process when you play the game that kind of keeps you calm into not raging? Because if anybody has ever, if you ever come to SoCal, if you've ever seen any other SoCal meme, you would know this man sits in such a posture that it makes you wonder if he's taking the game seriously, <laughs> which I, which spoilers he is, but like yeah. he's unfazed. It's like, it's like Daigo was born into like this buddhist posture and he just is unfazed by anything so what what goes into your mind what's um, what the story behind all this probably like two main things um one because i was very uh well i guess the more logical one would be if i don't show my opponent that i'm nervous then they're gonna be nervous they could be hitting me with, you know, anything. And I'm just, like, sitting there, chilling, uh, not showing any, like, sign of anxiousness. And they're going to be like, wow, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy isn't phased by anything. I got to gotta watch out. Um, so that's one. That's, like, the logical explanation. And then the, like, the more mental or uh, emotional explanation would be I was very, very emotional as a kid. Like, I would get into fights. I would, like cry out you know do whatever get angry um and then i forgot what exactly but something like i I either watched something or you know something happened and i was like okay i gotta i gotta i gotta calm down i gotta stop showing so much negative emotion because that just that's just not good and uh so i was like all right i gotta start even if i even if i'm scared of you know something or mad it's not gonna show it i'm just gonna keep calm keep a like calm demeanor um yeah so that that definitely helps (laughs) no no kidding no kidding um you should you should play poker man (laughs) You, you, you would totally just be like the number one player just unable to show face that's so true i actually tell people Whenever, if anybody recognizes my voice when I do a commentary, um, I tell people one of the keys to victory is a emotion within yourself. Because a lot of people, when they start losing, they lose their cool, right? Like, they start getting tunnel vision. They only see the victory, but they don't see the rest of the match. So you start seeing, like, these random runoff up smashes, down smashes. But, like, your cool... I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's the um, strep throat here. But you're, you're, you're as cool as a cucumber... And nobody, and like you're unfazed, and then I've seen you make comebacks before, and everyone's like, "Wow, well, how did he do?" And I was like, "Well, if you look at how he's sitting, man, he's just <laughs> life is going on, man. Everything is fine. The room is on fire, but he is alive, you know." Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like my, the funniest thing there. Um, let me ask you, how did you how did you come up with your tag? I kind of want to go a little bit more about like the scene that's yeah, going yeah. on here, but I'm curious about your tag. How did you come up with it? Um. I know Edmonds like probably said this on commentary a lot. So I know he loves this story, but um, uh, I've always been very, very bad 
at coming up with names or tags or you know whatever whenever i play a like a new mmo oh my god i i can't think of a name at all um and so my original plan was to use just my name for the tag uh when i got to socal you know just ken but the japanese sonic ken you know came out and started beating everyone I was yeah. like, well, I can't use them now. I'm just going to be copying them. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? And I was, uh, I was sitting at a izakaya with, my, with like two, two of my best friends. Um, one of them was called Eugene. One of them was called Shine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh I, I, I'm pretty sure you can like, guess where this is going. And I was like, you know what? If I can't use my name, I'll just, I'll just use your name. And uh, because we're all, I mean, we're we're all weebs. And uh, Shine, especially Shine, Shine is a like we we say we're all weebs, but Shine is like legitimately proficient in Japanese. Okay. Um, So he he is beyond the weebery, right? Like he's actually like, I'm authentic. You guys are just copying me. Okay. And and I, uh, we we always joke around saying, oh, if we uh, spell Shine phonetically in Japanese, it would just be Shine. Yeah, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll just use your name, uh, make Shine. Uh, I mean, uh, spell it phonetically, and I'll, that's just be like, I'm telling my opponent, go die. I'm I'm gonna beat you up. I'm gonna win. Um, that as well as you know when when, uh, when I was coming up with a tag, it was when we all graduated or are graduating high school, and so we're all going our separate ways. Granted, Shine is also in SoCal. Or, oh, actually, he's, he's back here in Taiwan, but he, uh, we, we both went to SoCal for college. I think um, that's the Fox main, right? I'm not too sure. Was Shine the, was Shine Fox. the Fox main? Sorry, I'm just Shine trying to remember. Shine doesn't play Smash. Oh, Shine does not Shine play Smash. Play, okay. No, Shine doesn't, no, not at all. Um, actually, the only... There's probably only two people from my high school... Three people from my high school that actually played Smash back when I was in high school. Okay. Um... One of them actually entered MSM before because he also went to SoCal for college. Um, and one of them is in Las Vegas. And okay. he has also entered Las Vegas tournaments. But they're both, like, not serious. They just like the game and, like, gotcha, gotcha. play. Understand it competitively. But, um, yeah, uh, so that's actually where my tag came from. Is my friend Shine. <laughs> It goes it goes hand in hand with like how you play, right? Because it's like if yeah, yeah. if you're very calm and collected, and your name means death, or is spelled like the word death in Japanese, yeah. right? Any weeb would just fear you. Like anybody who just reads copious amounts of manga would just like see play against you, and they just be like, "Great, he he's looking at me like he's light <laughs> from Death Note." Probably already wrote my name on it, and he has no place <laughs> to show it, and I'm gonna lose. Well, that's that would be my thought process there. Um, it's, actually, uh, it's actually very funny because I mean, obviously, some people understand the reference um, in America. Mm-hmm. Most people do, I guess, because well, yeah, the, a lot of Smashers are weeps. but um, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's but, true, um, man. True. Every every but, uh, Smasher, hold on, every Smasher I know, like at the time of this recording, every Smasher I know, man, we, we were both in the same discords. Yeah, Everyone's exactly. playing Genshin Impact. Oh. Everyone's playing yeah. Genshin Impact. I'm like, nah, man, yeah. I'm good. But um, whenever I go to Japan, and I have to introduce myself. I uh, I, I asked my friend, uh, this guy called Ottawa, who's like, he's like basically a Japanese teacher, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, uh, when, when I. When I introduce myself to like a Japanese player, how should I introduce myself? Because <laughs> obviously I don't want to be like, you know, telling them to go die. <laughs> and they're like, oh, um, then you should probably like elongate the the the, the she, and mm. then and then because um, then it's not you're you're not really uh like saying that word. You're more so just saying you know your tag i was like right, you know right, what right. That, you know that's fair yeah because otherwise yeah I, I do um i remember going to evo japan this time uh or earlier this year and uh I, like japanese players would come up to me and literally be like so is your name actually shine and i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's 
Oh my god. Um, that's great. That's great to hear. <laughs> this, yeah. Remember when we all remember when we all went to Evo Japan, right? Like earlier this year. Remember what the? It's funny <laughs> because I tell everybody before quarantine things were actually like not too bad like i was like oh yeah i went to dream hack you know i went to genesis um i was having mm-hmm. the time of my life man and then all of a sudden yeah. you know like you know uh life takes a left turn <laughs> and then everybody's all of a sudden you can't see each other for a very long time so mm-hmm. i just like things go i've talked about that enough but what i really want to talk about here is the scene in taiwan obviously we've we know now that hey like <laughs> Nobody plays Wi-Fi because everybody can play offline. But what's what makes up the scene in Taiwan? Like, what? Talk to me about like, I guess we'll take it structure by structure here. here. Like, talk to me about like, what are locals like for you guys, and what's your rule set and things like that? Um, for I guess some um, like to go into the I'll, I'll go into the history I guess of the uh, Taiwanese Smash scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the person I really have to bring up is a guy called Dayu. Um, just D A Y U. Uh, Y. How how did I? I suddenly forgot. <laughs> uh, U. Sorry. Okay. Uh, D A Y U. Um. And uh, that's his name. That's also his tag. <clears throat> uh, and he's like, he's like the guy that, basically, single-handedly. Grew this community. Like he he built this community from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, currently, he's also the head TO, as well as the store owner of like the store that we all um, gather at. Um, and uh, I met him back in back in 2017. Uh, so back in high school, which is I graduated high school in 2016, by the way. Okay. Um, so 2017 was uh, after I got to college. Uh, I did not think there was any Smash scene in Taiwan back in high school. And I was right. Um, but I actually never really bothered to check, partly because my Chinese wasn't like super good. So mm-hmm. checking online through a uh, manner was kind of a pain. Um, and I was just like pretty confident there's no Smash scene. Um, but then after getting to SoCal, I remember it was at a Falcon Punch Friday. And uh, I was talking to, I don't know if you've ever met him, this guy called Johnny. Uh, he, like, palled Javi or something uh, when Javi came for a lot of tournaments. But, anyways, okay. um, and he was like, yo, Shine, you know, I've actually seen a Taiwanese PR before. And I'm like, no, you haven't. Like, that that only that does not exist. You, there's no way you've seen a Taiwanese PR. He's like, no, dude, I swear there's a Taiwanese PR. I'll go home tonight, and I'll go find you it. So come uh, the next day, he messages me, and he starts off with this. I swear I'm not racist. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay. He's like, and he's like... So uh, here's the PR I remember, I, I saw. And he, he shows me a, like a, Sun, uh, a Shanghai PR, mm-hmm. which is obviously a Chinese scene. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Hey, man, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool that, you know, China even has a scene. I, I never knew that. So, I just uh, knew that I, today. Yeah, China actually has a pretty big scene. Uh, but they're mostly full. Uh, they're mostly, they mostly made up of expats. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so that got me thinking, huh, is there actually a Taiwanese scene? So I, so I went to Facebook, uh, you know, just searched up Super Smash Bros. Taiwan. There's a page. Uh, I posted, like, a little introduction uh, asking if there's a scene. And this guy called Dayu replied. <clears throat> and he said, hello, I'm actually, I also was from SoCal. And, um, and yeah, we, uh, we were, we, you know, we have some a few smash fests and monthlies here and i'm like oh damn that's cool so i got in contact with him uh this was back this is you know during civil like this is during the civil war time this yeah was, 2017, this was like a week after yeah 2017 and uh it, it was actually funny because Dai was in socal during civil war um but he had a, it, he was here for a wedding so he couldn't attend mm. but he actually did play one person in socal and a very known name, Pussy King. Oh my god. 
because uh, because <laughs> Dayu is very similar to me in that. Granted, he's like ten years older than me, mm-hmm. but um, he also came to so he also moved to SoCal from Taiwan and uh, attended, you know, uh, finished high school here, and then moved back to uh, to uh, Taiwan. And during his time here, he was in San Diego, and he was like he said he was like the best falcon in melee in san diego at his time but well, that time was like 12 13 years ago that was a long time ago. yeah <laughs> but um actually more than that yeah more than that, that but anyways may, that might have been like the first i'm really bad so i apologize if like any melee enthusiast flames me for this but like i think that might have been like what they what they refer to as the um the golden era of melee like the the ken oh, yeah. the, the ken yeah. era of melee so to speak yeah but um, so I got in contact contact with him, and then when I actually got back to Taiwan during some summer break, I actually met up with him. Um, he was very good. He was you know very good fundamentally. Um, uh, and then together we sort of helped and try to bring up the scene. Um, and you brought up the rule sets that we use. Uh, and because you know technically me and him we're both. From SoCal, mm-hmm. so we decided let's just use a SoCal rule set. So uh, our competitive rule set is actually just mirrors two GG. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's actually good. I mean, a lot of people. I personally am very much of like, I don't want to talk forever about it, but I told everybody I kind of wanted to see seasons where, like, mm-hmm. one season we would have like Yoshi Story be legal, right? And then the next yeah. season Yoshi Story would not be legal. It would be God, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but like Lila, Lila, just an example, Lila would be legal. Yeah. And then the next season, you know, we would get, um, I know like Kalos would be legal or something like that. And then mm-hmm. that never happened because just reasons. I mean, now we can't test that because you're obviously in the middle of quarantine. But it's really cool to hear that you guys had that kind of rule set implemented. What I kind of yeah. want to ask you just for me, because geographically, like I'm lo- I have to look up at a map here. I know Taiwan is above the Philippines and it's right next to Hong Kong. Me being the gaming aficionado that I am, I know that in China they did not get the Nintendo at all. I knew it was called like the IQ, and then you they were I yeah it was called like the IQ. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, from what I know from like the stuff. So, but I don't know. Do you guys have the Switch? And yeah, how yeah. does that work? Yeah. So, because I, I know I know yeah. I know in China like they don't have like some console specifically, right? If I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. please correct me if I'm wrong. Um. I mean, I, I guess, like, the 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 easiest way to describe it is just uh, Taiwan tries its best to not be part of China. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I, I don't, te- I mean, personally, I don't, I don't like talking about it because um, it, it's, like, sort of political. Right, and, right, uh, right. Talking about it with some people it gets pretty heated but um i i personally think taiwan is its own country right okay um, um a lot of chinese people would say otherwise um, <laughs> oh. i think I, could, I i i think we could get along despite our our uh, differences of that um but some people get really heated about that uh some people in taiwan also think that you know they um I, i'm pretty sure you've heard of it the one one china yeah. Uh, policy, whatever. Um, so there's that. Um, but obviously, if if you have dissenting opinions on this, it obvious uh, it means that you know Taiwan and China are separated to some degree, right, at least. Right. And uh, you know that degree uh, presents itself uh, a lot of the times by how much censorship there is. China obviously is a lot of it. Taiwan basically none because Taiwan tries its best to like you know have a democracy, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh if anything, I mean America is in support of Taiwan. Right, right, right. I mean that should give you an idea of, you know where it stands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's good. I'm like I'm. I don't know anything about like that kind of history. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. And to me, 
if anybody were to ask me on the street, like, hey, do you think Taiwan is its own country? I'd tell you yes, because <laughs> I, one, I don't know. I'm not educated in yeah. that field, right? Geographically speaking, I actually do think Taiwan is its own country. Yeah. Um, and then third, based off U.S. history books, right, I've been kind of led to believe that Taiwan is its own country. So therefore, mm -hmm. to me, Taiwan is its own country. And that's how yeah. I feel like that's how you guys are able to, you know, get the switch. Because like I said, like I know in some parts of China, like in, you would have to either import it illegally mm -hmm. or get it by some other means. And I know like if you, I think if you live in Shanghai, you're, you're totally fine. Like you can get a Nintendo switch, whatever. But if you live in other parts of China, like it may be more difficult. I don't know. I mm -hmm. just, how I go. Um, the, uh, actually the, the two biggest scenes in China are, uh, Shanghai and Beijing. Okay. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. It's like basically the two like most send out cities in China. Mm -hmm. um, Guangzhou also has a. I, I don't know if it's a big scene, but they they actually they do like yearly tournaments with a lot of a pretty big pot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if it wasn't for you know COVID, I'd probably go over and, uh, and get some of that. But uh, <laughs> you know, COVID. <laughs> Compared to some coward, you know, we're, we're all just trying to like. Oh, we definitely sharken. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah, we definitely sharken, man. I used to, there used to be, um, there used to be tournaments. I used to tell people like, you you will find one of three people at a tournament. Um, I'm not gonna say the person's name because the person is long gone, uh, yeah. for good reasons. But I say you you'll find a few people at, who are sharking tournaments. You'll find Shine, for sure. <laughs> you'll find Master Mario, usually somewhere around there. And then, oh, mm -hmm. God, what's his name? He's also he's a Mario from Long Beach, and I can't remember his name. Jeez, uh, Jason. Jason, yeah, yeah, Jason, yeah. You'll see, you'll see. There, there, there were a few, there were a few sharks in in these uh, hundred dollar Poponis, you know, locals with seventeen entrants. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yeah, man. <laughs> People would be like, that tournament's free, and I was like, it's not free, man. I guarantee you, by last minute of that sign up, Shine will be there to collect his money. <laughs> um. Can you talk to me a little bit, like, going forward here, can you talk to me a little bit, what's, because I'm curious to know, what's the esports scene like in Taiwan? Of course, most most people most people know here, like, in Asia, esports are a much bigger thing than here in the West. Um, but what's it like over there for you guys? Um, Taiwan, like, I, I'm, like, personally, I, I don't follow too much about uh, esports in general. Cause, um, I just, you know, I play, I play Smash, <laughs> but, uh, I don't really play other esports games. Um, but our Street Fighter scene, I know, is very, very, like, well, well built, um, for good reason. Um, one, because Street Fighters are, like, in general, very, like, popular, um, mm -hmm. here and basically all of Asia. Um, we have two very good players, Gamer B, um, pretty sure most people will know, uh, from his, like, I forgot which year, but he, he did very, very well at EVO. I think second? Or yeah, first, I, th I, th I think he got, like, within top three, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so people know him, people know Oil King. <laughs> yeah, one of the uh, legends, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually met him. It was, that's cool. But, um, <clears throat> uh, there's those two, and they... You know, they do a good job. Um, besides that, I don't think there's much of a esports scene here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a league. There's a good league team. I think like like I think I'm pretty sure Taiwan won a championship like a for league, but very earlier on, right. and then never again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, hey man, if you guys think TSM going zero and you know zero and six is rough, man. <laughs> yeah, but um, besides that, like, I'm pretty sure Smash right now for Taiwan is actually the second biggest FGC scene. Okay. Um, which is like, which is a good thing. It's also like, wow, that's kind of kind of low, um, because. Uh, especially okay, back in Smash Four, definitely not the case. Because in Smash Four, I think our sorry, excuse me, um, yeah. our our, uh, our largest monthly was a twenty-five man monthly, um, and that that was like incredible for us. We were like, 
oh my goodness, 25 people. That's crazy. And in SoCal, you know, 25 people, that's small. That's tiny. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, now in Ultimate, uh, every monthly we get like an average of 50, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's actually good. Um, and our record is 108, which is for uh, our major earlier this year called Fist Bump International. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, granted, a lot, a lot of these, like, because we have two tournaments that are like 100-ish, uh, 108 at uh, uh, Fist Bump International and 99 at Taipei Major, which is hosted by Oil King. Um, both of these actually had a lot of international people come. Uh, Hong Kong, uh both parts of china or or both main cities of china uh the scene there uh okinawa Mm -hmm. uh korea and uh sun like captain jack pretty sure you know who that is yeah yeah he he came over legendary Um, for those of you guys wondering that's the legendary founder from yeah from melee one of the one of the greatest yeah from japan Uh, yeah he he came over and uh so a lot of these 100 man tournaments are, you know, they 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 get a lot of contribution from international players. Um but it, it's growing. It's growing. Mm-hmm. It's growing. We have, oh, actually, um there's the uh there there's a company called Brook here in Taiwan that uh mainly does traditional FGGC stuff, like they they make fight sticks and stuff. Um and they are getting into Smash, okay. and uh, you know, to to their first step is to make an invitational, and because uh, they do this every year for Street Fighter, and they mm-hmm. decided to do it this year for Smash because well, Smash is getting bigger now, um, and so it's a, uh, and I, I know you brought this up. You said um, you said we don't have to do online, right? Uh, but online is still a very, like... Because I know for, like, Street Fighter and other traditional FGCs, online is actually a very, very good uh, medium to play right. the game for, uh, unlike Smash, fortunately. But, um... They, uh... We have three online qualifiers. Uh, okay. One tomorrow, and, uh... One next week, and then one the week after. And then we have a final offline qualifier uh during hall on halloween or well we don't really have a halloween but uh october 31st we have a offline qualifier and eight people from these four tournaments will get invited to the uh like november 7th it was called it's called brook fighter because you know the company brook um and uh it actually has a huge pot it has um $2,000 Two thousand dollar pot for eight people, and U.S. dollars, right? Yeah, 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 gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, they, uh, so like it, it, I'm glad that other companies are really starting to show interest in Smash in Taiwan. Um, that as well as I, I don't know if you've seen the photos from FBI or Fist Bump International. Um, I s- I saw the ones from the, the what was it called the the Taipei Major. Because I know that was part of, um, that was actually part of Capcom Cup. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like last year. And I remember it like, was well, like. Last year, th- June. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was in June. I don't, you won that, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, you won that. And I was like, oh my God, Shina is number I was like, oh my God, Shina is number one in Taiwan, whatever. And he won, he won, he won a. <laughs> this is funny because. Well, he, was, well, he was very happy about that. Because he was like, damn, you were. You're the only one that like kept the kept the championship in Taiwan for some for a game. I was like, yeah. <laughs> the best part about this is that me and Toasty, we were both laughing. I was like, damn man, Ken actually won a Capcom Cup tournament. And we were just like, like popping off, we're like yeah, man, let's do it, let's do it, Sheena. You know, winning a Capcom Cup tournament. But we we're like, oh no, it's it's Street Fighter has their Capcom Cup there as their official tournament, but there is a yeah. Smash tournament there as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just like how I think, like a year or two ago, we had um, SoCal regionals, and yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, and it was part of the Capcom Cup for that year. So, um, yeah, uh, companies are starting to show interest. Um, I'm not sure about their esports scene. I don't follow that 
Uh, sorry about that, but no, 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 it's, it's all good. Just tell yeah. me what you know, man, because to me, it's it's a lot more interesting. I mean, to me, it's a lot more interesting because you know I'm I'm here in the U.S., so I kind of know like, hey, man, if you're doing esports, you either want to live in SoCal, or you want to live in Texas. You know, you want to live mm-hmm. in one of the two places, and then maybe if you want to stream with the world's greatest ping known to man, you go live in NorCal, and then <laughs> you know you never have a thing of lag. Because, you know, they, they got fiber and 5G up in there. So um, knowing about, like, esports scenes in other parts of the world always makes me more interested. How's, how's the, let me ask you, how's the Wi-Fi over there for you guys? Like, what's what's the connection like? Uh, Compared to here, of course. I, I, I do not have any first-hand experience with that. Because ever since I moved to, so ever since I graduated high school, I have not touched Wi-Fi. After two years of for glory, nope. SoCal had so many good offline players. I'm never touching Wi-Fi ever again. Uh, so I didn't play Wi-Fi in the states. Um, I I still haven't played Wi-Fi here. I, I okay, actually no, I have played Wi-Fi here. I played one uh, Wi-Fi tournament with Okinawa, where I went one two. <laughs> uh, yeah, no 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 Wi-Fi for me. But um, for what I hear. It's still not, like, good. It, okay. It, <laughs> yeah, from what I hear from, like, other players here that actually do play some Wi-Fi, it's not that, it's not that good. Okay. It's just as bad as we have it. That's fair. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> um, let, me, let me ask you. When it comes to living in Taiwan and living in SoCal, what is it that you see in... Is your experience right? Like, what is it that you see about the? Because now that you guys are like slowly starting to, you know, build up esports, and like you said, it's becoming mm-hmm. slowly a thing. What is it that you see in terms of players in Taiwan, and in terms of players in SoCal? What's what are some of the differences that you've noticed? Um, I mean, obviously, skill level. Right. Uh, it's probably you know that's that's mosquito. Okay. Um, uh. You know, um, granted, uh, the Taiwanese, like, skill level has grown a lot, uh, since Smash 4. Um, Smash 4, it was, it was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. But, um, and, and uh, even, like, the first year of Ultimate, um, because, okay, I'll, I'll be honest, um, there were, I, I, I try my best to promote, like, the Taiwanese scene, mm-hmm. um, obviously, uh, promote streams, promote whenever we actually, you know, w- whenever we have a tournament, um, especially nowadays, nowadays, uh, but part, partly because why, you know, uh, why I do it so much nowadays is because I feel like, uh, the skill level in Taiwan has grown to a point where I could be like, this is, this is actually good. Okay. Um. Back during like the first year of Ultimate, uh, I'll do it when I'm there. When, or, or sorry, there when I'm here. But uh, whenever I was back in like SoCal, I wouldn't really uh, like tweet about it. Uh, like obviously it's sort of bad, but it was also like they weren't like good enough for me to be like, this is the Taiwanese Smash scene because I, yeah. I want I want people to have a good impression of them. You know, no, um, and that's fair. That's totally fair. Yeah, and that, but like now, ever since like this year, this year especially, like 20, 2020, they they improved a lot. Um, because uh, people people ask me a lot, like, oh, you know, you, I know you're number one, but you, like, can can anyone beat you? And they actually can. They're like, there's there's um, I would I would say three people now that okay. are. Two, two, two to three people now that can like actually, like, give me a run for my money, and uh, it's the number two lira, uh, who's who's a Jap- he, he's a Japanese zero suit, um, who's in Taiwan for work, but like he, he's he's been in Taiwan for a long time now, mm-hmm. uh, so we count him as a Taiwanese player. Um, there's him, there's Dayu, obviously, uh, and then there's a. Uh, there's a sort of an uppercomer called Taroka, mm-hmm. uh, who actually won last month's XGT. Um, so like these three people are like 
if you if you put them in SoCal, I feel like they would actually do work as well. Mm -hmm. um, granted, like maybe not like oh uh, PR, but they would definitely like you know the unranked. They'd definitely be part of them. Maybe better, <laughs> but then you know I'm, uh, I'm a little biased. Yeah, I'm a little biased. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair, man. I mean. You you came from like an area of SoCal that we call that we mean to call you know the SoCal unranked like be careful of yeah, SoCal yeah. unranked this, they're just as strong as the ranked players, and yeah. that that comes a lot from like you playing with Ketchup with Syro, with all, all these them. yeah with the the uh, what we call the Tyson Tyson hyperbolic you know chamber of uh, players right that established that that really good sense of grind culture just grinding and playing the game yeah. And to the point that, like, it brought out a lot of good players, you know. To, sorry if I can't name everybody there. You know, my, it's currently, what? Too many. Yeah, it's one too many. But it's also, like, 11.30, you know, p.m. and so far. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it brought, like, you and Ketchup. You know, two, two players they can easily name. You know, players that were PR'd and players that have, like, been a threat in SoCal in general. So it goes to show that, like, yeah, you may have some bias, but it also kind of comes mm -hmm. with the fact of like you know i trained with some really good players you know who did get eventually ranked who did eventually take names yeah. and it goes to show you know that that level can also possibly transfer to taiwan that you know hopefully we can see come to soak out at some point yeah also um uh like aside from skill level the way they play um they 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 well most people here probably try their best to base their play style off of like the japanese play style Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, yeah, I know people like typically don't like, um, you know, people speaking too overly high of the Japanese play style. But um, yeah, a lot a lot of people here like it. Well, it's funny because like me, who's a link main, right? Like I'm not gonna go ahead and like th look there's a lot of link mains out there there's like orange there's burn me there's lonesome there's french tutor there's all these other names right uh but the one person that stood uh kind of like stood everybody knows of it's iza and he or his argument for a time and if you guys want to go check out that video on di radio please feel free to go check it out his argument for a time was like hey look there's a, there's a lot of cool tech skill you can do with link but the one thing that really matters a lot is good, having good neutral and a great play and, a, and a solid punish game. And when T came to SoCal and he started having like this great neutral and he got number two at like, you know, Civil War, everyone started going like, oh my God, he doesn't even know all the link tech. And he's like, no, he got second place of like Civil War. And I was like, yeah, because sometimes. Third, third, third. Third, third. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, he got third in Civil War, and it's like, yeah, because sometimes, you know, you can be the most technical player, but tech skill doesn't matter if you don't have the neutral to back it up. Right, and like mm -hmm. that's something that I feel like maybe you can help me out and what your your analysis is like. That's something I feel that Japan does a little bit better. Like they may not have. I mean, there's there's Prand Grix, who's one of the Japanese link, who has like a lot of yeah. tech skill. But like when you look yeah. at the one who's getting all the points, it's T, right? And T isn't doing those bomb fair loops. You know, he's not doing all the. You no, know, he's he's walking up to you and he's like, all right, cool, you held shield, well, fine. Okay. Do, baby, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what is it that you think the Japanese players do? Um. What, uh, um, that you think they, uh, in this case, in this case, what do you let me, let me ask that one better? What is it that you think the Japanese players do that players from Taiwan mimic? I think that's a better way to ask it. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'd say it's well, one, it's waiting because, uh, America, well, I, oh. Well, my my experience is sort of limited to the West Coast, but um, you know, a lot of people don't like to wait there. Mm -hmm. uh, they they very much like to. They they always have to be moving. If you're not moving, and, and like I also am guilty of this sometimes, but uh, like if you're not moving, you're not you're not oh you're not playing the game right, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um. And I feel like uh, that's something that, uh, you know, the Taiwanese players are, are... It's something good that they're taking off of the Japanese player. It's like, they're... Because they're very... Um, I say this, or I think this a lot, and I think that I, I, I very much like watching Japanese players because I feel like whenever I watch them, 
I can understand, I can really understand why they, they do a certain auction. Mm-hmm. Not saying American players aren't fun to watch. I love watching some of them as well. Obviously, Mars, MK Leo, you know, all, all those, uh, Larry, you know, if we're talking about SoCal, a lot of them, um, Florida as well. But um, whenever I watch Japanese players, especially, I, I think it's very evident, especially because of now, I don't want to. I, I don't like watching Wi-Fi, and uh, Japan has their in, like offline invitationals recently. So I I've been watching a lot of those, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I can actually see why they're doing certain auctions um, instead of where sometimes in America I feel like a lot of the a lot of players are just for lack of better terms and, and sort of like in a bad way of a mashing. <laughs> No, dude, say it, like, say say it with your chest, man. Say it with your chest, man. Sometimes Americans just mash. Like, well, in my case, they just like to press buttons, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's it's not mashing. It's like they like to play, uh, press buttons. You're mm-hmm. right. It's um, and because of that, it sort of masks that um, like their intention or lack of intention. Hmm. Yeah. I see that too. I think that's one thing I like in my place, in my place style, what I'm trying to incorporate is that like that more patient, like, okay, I'm gonna wait because uh-huh. if you think about it in mm-hmm. a fight, right? If you're always swinging your fists, you know, at some point you're going to leave yourself open. And I tell people coincidentally, yeah. that's why the, the whiff, that's why in American boxing, you know, a whiff and a punish, quote unquote, the whiff punish or the cross counter yeah. is such a thing in boxing because if you're caught swinging and your opponent catches that and they dodge it and they hit you for it, you get punished. And in American fighting games, you know, they a lot of I've noticed that, you know, me being a commentator, a lot of people just love to press buttons. And I get it. Like, Roy's Nair feels so satisfying, man. Like, oh, oh yeah feels great but if you get caught doing it one too many times in the air then yeah you're gonna fall you're gonna fall into a luigi grab at some point and then die at zero because guess what you pressed a one too many times you know versus like a japanese player who might think like let me actually wait and see how you're gonna respond to this specifically you see that with ken's play style which what makes him you know one of the great sonics out there is like he's very his play style alongside the character definitely goes to show like how he came into prominence you know as a player yeah so let me let me ask you one thing what can kind of like a little bit off a little bit off center here because we're, we're, we're definitely walking away um in your time being in taiwan since you've left SoCal, right, what's obviously you miss your friends we all miss you we all miss each other man i miss I miss going to Keynes after MSM, and there you would be, and there Charlie would be, and there Ketchup would be, and we'll all just be laughing it up at, yeah, yeah, at Hat, and we'd just be laughing up at 2 in the morning at some random restaurant somewhere. But what is it that you, what's something that you miss about being in SoCal and competing in SoCal? You know, because that's something that I'm starting to, like, ask myself every Monday as I miss MSM. I, uh, I was actually... I was actually thinking this, like, literally, I think yesterday or, like, two days before. When, uh, specifically, when I was watching uh, Eastern Power Invitational, the, the Japanese one. Um, and it's that I really do miss being the underdog. I, it sounds very cocky, and I, 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 don't, I don't want to sound cocky, but, like, it's been, like, what, you know, half a year uh, that every single you know uh, tournament that we have every month, that it's like oh, I'm expected to win no matter what. Um, it's not. It's not even like because oh I'm I'm just so good. No, it's not. It's because well the Taiwanese smash scene. You know this is the limit for now. Um, and I I really do miss when when I was in SoCal or you know whenever I would go to Japan or whenever I would travel for a major, that I'd be like, okay, I'm second seed, third seed in my pool. I want to make this upset. I, I am, you know, I, oh, I'm studying this guy. The, oh, who, who's in my pool? Uh, Jewel, you know. Um, okay, I, I want to make this upset on him. Uh, and I'm going to be studying. I'm going to be looking at his, you know, tournament. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, like sets and tournament. I'm gonna actually be labbing labbing this this out, uh, or maybe even at a local, 
you know, uh, oh, I'm fighting Larry. I never beat Larry. Uh, I want to finally beat Larry this time. Um, like that, that feeling of what, like trying to get the upset, trying to make the upset, trying to beat someone that, that is just better than you. I, I kind of, I really miss that. Yeah. I, that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of one thing that I do miss a little bit. I don't want to get into personal cause this, this talk show is not about me, but like, I do miss yeah. that <clears throat> MSM was the, the way to kick off my week. It was like cool, mm -hmm. get out of work, get out of class, whatever, drive like two hours in traffic because that's how SoCal is. Um, drive two hours in traffic, go to this thing, have fun, have a great time, come home at four in the morning, try to wake myself up in time to do everything else the next day. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. Like it, it, they were like, yeah. there are some great moments that came from it, you know, that I really, really enjoyed. And then the best part about it was like, going to the USC Friday and then that Friday I remember because we've, we've gone to dinner before we would yep. we would talk about like what happened during the week like in terms of smash we'd be like oh yeah this person got upset that person got upset or this person's not that good as we thought right it was it was really really dope and then we'd also talk about like random life stuff I know my favorite thing is like you and case was and Eon all talk about your weave stuff oh. right <laughs> you know your gotchas and all that but like we'd all have a good time. And I miss that like social gathering aspect Definitely. of being in the community, you know, um, and something I miss a lot, you know, as we're like slowly closing the show, let me ask you, where do you think from your perspective being in Taiwan, where do you think smash is right now? How do you, how do you, and how do you feel about it? Given all of these things that have happened? Um, I, I think it's like, cause I, you know, obviously, um, back w was it July, you know, when all the, uh, allegations and well, the troops more like, uh, came out, um, people were very afraid of, you know, all oh, the smash thing is dying you know, all that. Um, as well as e even nowadays, um, people are like, like, okay. The, the, like, oh, the smasher jokes or the smash community jokes, they've been around you know, forever now, but, uh, they've been very abundant nowadays. Uh, I feel like it's partly because of that, um, but I feel like once, once offline comes back, once, you know, COVID ends, uh, once majors come back, once locals come back, um, it'll, it'll go back. It'll go back to, um, you know, when it was before COVID, it was because people granted, I have seen like a loss of motivation in a lot of people nowadays. I mean, it's, I, I can't blame them. It's, you know, all you got is online and then, uh, oh yeah. And it, it's hard to find motivation under that, under that circumstance, but I, I'm pretty sure when offline comes back, you know, so some people are going to be, uh, or like, everyone's going to be like, oh, offline's back. Finally. Um, you know, let me go to, let me go a local, even if I don't intend to compete anymore, let me go a local just for old time's sake. And what do you know? They're going to get sucked into the vortex that is go entering a local. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, and also the, uh, like even without the thinking of competitive side, uh, when people talk about the smash community, I I've had this, I've thought about this a lot and, um, I, I, I find it like I gotta say annoying. Uh but whenever someone brings up oh the Smash community is full of you know, whatever, whatever. The uh you know, I, I hate the Smash community, um stuff like that. Uh I, re I really like to or I really wanna say like that that is the tw Twitter is not the Smash community. Twitter is very far can, can, from the Smash community. Can you repeat that for me again, please? I like that. Can you repeat it? Can you repeat Say it one more time for me. Twitter is not the Smash community. Like, the Smash community for me, personally, is one, SoCal. It is the many different parts of SoCal. It is, you know, the 818. You got K Swift, you got E, I mean, not E, I'm sorry, E on 66. You got Zen, <laughs> you got uh, Kamui, Nico, Zen, you, Larry, all of them. You got the 66, Charlie, uh, me, Nito, Eon. Got I E Ketchup, Cyro, Razo, all them, San Diego, uh, Urban, all that. The, that's the Smash community. That's the people I've met at a 
tournament uh, at locals at majors, you know, Florida, Vegas, uh, New York, NorCal. They're, those are that's the Smash community. That's not the Twitter. Uh, Taiwan as well. You know, the people I've met here, uh, <clears throat> the people, the players I've met from Korea, China, uh, the Japanese community. You know, I've met a lot of them. Very accommodating players. Um, you know, that, that's the community I know, not, not, you know, whoever's vocal on Twitter, whoever's, you know, just trying to, whoever's trying to talk shit, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 as well as whoever, yeah, as well as whoever's done the bad things that, uh, obviously we, we found out mm. that's not the community. Those are, those are people, those are individuals, there's. They're not the whole community. Yeah. They yeah. they do not represent who we are as a community. Mm-hmm. They just represent a larger a part of it, but not the yeah, larger part base. Of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I agree. I think that's I'm glad you say that because that's something that I that I've kind of like not necessarily come to terms with, but I would say have been feeling because lately I'm very I'm very I just even though I'm not like active hundred and ten percent on Twitter, because I'm always working on something, but Lately, it feels like it's a crime. Like I think, I think Jump Steady, right, has has a really good quote to him. So it's like I'm not a I'm a smasher in a non smasher's world. I'm no, what does it say? It's I am a smasher in a non. Oh, I am a something in a non smasher's world. Whatever. I don't know. He basically says I'm not a smasher. I'm just here to play this game, and that's fair. <laughs> you know, like you know, like that, that's such a good quote, but it's also so like cringe at the same. Yeah. It's well, such I, a good quote. <laughs> You know, uh, I, got, I gotta find it because I gotta make sure I'm saying it properly. So, um, yeah, I definitely remember seeing it. I, I missed Jelani. I missed Jelani. Yeah, anyway. I missed Jelani. A non smasher in a smasher's world. That's Jelani yeah, for yeah. the win. J A L A N I F T W. Jump steady for you guys. Yep. Um, you know, a non smasher in a smasher's world, right? Totally fine. Yeah, like you said, right? It's It's got its own laugh to it. But it feels like it's a crime. Like sometimes they tell people, like it feels, it feels like it's a crime to see you play this game. Like, oh, you're a smasher. Oh, you only have these yeah. opinions, right? It's like, no, dude. Like I'm just a human being who plays this game. And either way, coincidentally, you know, not to flame or roast anybody, but this is just facts. I think a lot of people have never really gone to a local. You know, a lot of those people who yeah. who, who say those things. You know, they've never really. They're not like mm-hmm. you and I, who, like you said, right? We, the, the several parts of SoCal or what it is the community, you know, and what it stands for, right? These group of people who have fun, compete against one another, and then we can laugh about it while we eat our canes and go to Korean barbecue at 2 in the morning. You know, that's that's the real mm-hmm. community, right? These, these group of people yeah. who call themselves friends, who, uh, in this in your case, right, who, like, went to Japan, took his friends to Comic Cat for the first time, and then had a good time, you know? I've never been to it, but it sounds a lot of fun, honestly. It's, it's niche. It's niche. It's niche. It's All right. Niche. Well, it's bigger than AX apparently, from what I hear. <laughs> it, it's different. It, 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 I, I, it's not not appropriate for YouTube, but that's, no, that's uh, fair. That's fair. Hey, to each their own, man. To each their. I can edit this out if you want, man. No, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, but th- that's what I'm talking about. Like you, you guys. We all have interests. Like. Like I said, right, like, that's kind of what makes up the larger community is, like, we all have interests, you know. Cyro, like, for a really good example that I, like, want to say, and I apologize for probably going on too much, but, like, Cyro likes to work out. You know, he likes mm-hmm. to be healthy and exercise, and then that transfers over to ketchup. So now he enjoys working out, hanging out, and oh, yeah. having these conversations, you know. Like, you, Case was Eon, Charlie, you guys like your old, you guys like to play gotchas or just play certain games together that aren't Smash or have relations like, hey, I like uh, I like Fate Stay Night or Fate Grand Order. Like, let's talk about that. Like, we have other interests that makes us friends. So that's what I feel that like SoCal is. It's like we're all we're all kind of friends, so to speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that that's more what I'm talking about here. <laughs> um, God, I feel like we pretty much reached the end of the show. Kind of a Kind of a question. <laughs> I think we've, we've explained you and everything all together. Um, yeah. I guess the last question I can ask you is what's, you know, what's your favorite SoCal memory? Uh, Smash or non-Smash? Both. Let's just do both. Let's do both for the... 
we'll, we'll start with the we'll start with the smash one first. Um, smash one. Uh, God, there's two. Uh, Maybe the first one that comes to your head, because that probably could be your your favorite one. Maybe. Uh, maybe not not my favorite, but it's definitely like, because uh, re- recently, especially from like or maybe high school friends or something, uh, if they ask, "Yo, can I see a like a like a bot of you playing Smash?" Uh, I'm very glad that there's a there's a bot of me that I can. Like, like I can show people, and I'm like, yes, I'm very proud of this bot. And uh, the bot is me versus Best Ness at oh, Nightmare yeah. on Smash. And, and like, part of it is because one, I'm playing DK, it's my favorite par- character to play. Uh, two, it was a very good set. Like, I lost, but it was a good set. And three, I'm I'm dressed very nicely in that set. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. I remember this because the the joke that we all had was like, "Damn man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken Ken looks like a yakuza dude." Like he, like, and you came dressed with a great attire. That was actually a good one. Yeah, you're right. Uh, that was a pretty good one. Um, as for non Smash, oh man, there's. I mean, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it has to be like with the Cal Poly game. Mm-hmm. Um. For those of you guys well, wondering, let me, let me explain the Cal Poly gang. Uh, it is Arkester, yeah. H.P. Azu, now Mr. What is it? Mr. Rogers? Mr. J Mr. underscore Rogers, yeah. Mr. ASAP. Mr. Rogers, yeah. ASAP. Um, Toasty. A- Not Sir Toasty, just Toasty. Um, <laughs> BMC. I think there's Kless in there as um, well. There's a lot of people. But, yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm, there's actually a lot of people in that like gang that's not even Cal Poly. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, I probably have to be a, oh, a I got, trip. I gotta say Kiko Man too, because if I don't say, he's gonna get upset at me. Kiko Man as yeah. well. Uh, it, it's probably like uh, all the car. Uh, I, I I can't single it down to a single memory because there's just too many. But I'll say I'll say a uh, I'll say collective of them, and it's um, whenever any of that you know that group of people, whenever. Uh, some of us or all of us are in my car going to the tournament or going to somewhere to eat and we're, you know, we're just playing music. We're, you know, uh, Toasty or Alan, uh, Kiko man, Babs when he was here, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, Kanye, sorry, Mr. Rogers, Kanye, it's Kanye, it's not Mr. Rogers, Kanye, uh, it's, and Kanye, or, you know, they're all just in the back, they're just popping off the music, they're, uh, or, you know, CJ, as well, oh, sorry, ASAP, you know, any of us, any combination of those people in the car, we're going to a tournament, we're going to somewhere to eat, we're just having fun, and that, that is, that's probably one of my favorite things, and something I miss very dearly about being in SoCal, just, yeah. Having fun with the buddies, going to going anywhere. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on that. Like, for those of you who don't know me, I used to just drive like Arrow, Nodule, HLB, uh, Noteca. Um, it, dude, it was like it was, that's, those are like some of my favorite rides on a Monday. Like, it's literally me just scrambling to pick up everybody by like four o'clock so I can go get boba before the tournament and then get to the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was like our favorite pastime. Like, let's go get Bobo before the tournament, and then after the tournament, we're going to Canes, which I didn't yeah. want to go to Canes, but like, we're going to Canes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you don't, you don't actually go to Canes to, to, to eat. You go to Canes for, 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 for like the atmosphere. Exactly. That's 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 actually like, that's one thing that I told myself. Like, you know what? I'm gaining weight. I'm going to Canes for the Canes. I just start going to Canes for the real atmosphere because that's why I'm gaining weight here. <laughs> You gotta stop eating canes at two in the morning, man. I mean, we all can be Charlie. I see that kid eat canes like at two in the morning. I was like, "How are you this thin?" Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, man. I think I think we got a pretty good show, man. Uh, it's been a really good oh. time talking to you. <laughs> I haven't seen you or, like normally we probably see each other like twenty times by. Definitely, definitely every week. Yeah, every, every week. week. Um, but that's that's the best part is like we would all see each other, but. I guess that's what makes this episode a little bit more like closer to home. I was like, it's somebody I haven't seen 
since he made the the great decision to go to go Taiwan. <laughs> As I wish I could do, shoot, man. I wish I had that time when he is right. citizenship, man. I'd be chilling over there. <laughs> um, so Shine, let me ask you before we before we close the show, where where can people find you, and then where can people find the Smash scene in Taiwan? Uh, so I'm pretty sure you'll probably have it up there, Shine, you know, underscore Smash. Um, which uh, is above my, my myself because I did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, not not the brightest apps, but you know, it's some. Um, there's that, and uh, I don't I don't stream yet. I uh. I plan to one day, one day, one day. Um, but as for the Smash scene, um, the we, we have a Twitter. We don't really use it uh, because most of our players are local. But uh, it's called Fistbump TW because um, the store that Dayu owns is called Fistbump. Um, so yeah, Fistbump, at Fistbump.tw uh, for Twitter. As for Twitch, it's the same thing. Twitch.tv slash fistbumptw. Um, that one we probably, you know, we actually use a lot. Every tour- every every tournament we do, we, we have it. And sometimes I uh, when, when we have practice sessions, I also stream using that. Um, yeah, that definitely check that out. You know, check out the Tony's players as well. All right. Yeah, should be, should be it. Yeah. Well, I am going to also hang up from the call and go to sleep because it is it's pretty it's much... Like, it's, it's almost 12, yeah. Yeah, it's almost I mean, It's 12. 3 p.m. here, but... <laughs> oh, it's 3 p.m. over there. Yeah, you yeah. guys are like a day ahead, right? It's like Thursday over there. We're like 15 hours ahead, yeah. Jesus. Man, lucky. <laughs> well, I guess in some cases, lucky. Well, yeah, lucky because oh, you guys have to worry, yeah, worry yeah. about COVID. Yeah. Um, But yeah, guys, that's been a show. It's been great having you on, Shine, to definitely Thank talk you. about 